welcome to Fresh Perspectives. My name is Gail, and my guests today, I have two of them, uh, Patty Benton and Annie, and they are here today to represent the Northern Chautauqua Canine Rescue. Thank you, Annie and Patty, for coming on today. Well, thanks for inviting us. It's good <laughs> to be here. Yeah, um, tell us something about Annie now. Okay, so Annie is uh, maybe, we're, we're not real sure, but a couple years old. Um, she came in from an overcrowded shelter. Uh, we get some dogs from Indiana, Ohio, overcrowded shelters that feel that these dogs are adoptable and they really don't have room, so we take some of those in almost every week. And so she came in a couple weeks ago. Um, it seemed like she had probably had puppies at some point. She's some kind of a terrier mix. Right now she's being treated for a little bit of a yeast thing in her ears, but she's doing really well with the medicine and, uh, and she's just a real nice little girl. Yeah, she, she seems <laughs> she's, to be. She seems like sitting in my lap. Yeah, she does. If you want a lap dog, she's the one. Right, right. So she hasn't been there too long then? No, she, I think it's only been like two weeks maybe. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, are you going to be able to have events this year now that people are getting vaccinated? Um, we still were able to have our yard sale last, last summer, year, yeah. which I'm is our biggest uh, fundraiser. Uh -huh. And um, we'll be having that again. Like last year, we, we were able to do it. We had, um, you know, because it's mostly outside or mm -hmm. in our building and we can open the doors and mm -hmm. a lot of fresh air. Mm -hmm. We did ask people to wear masks. Um, we had sanitizer everywhere. We had the um, the cashier station set up outside under another tent. So we really, you know, it wasn't crowded and people did comply and wear masks. And uh, so we were able to successfully, mm -hmm. successfully mm -hmm. have that. And then over the winter, we had a very successful online auction. Oh. So people mm -hmm. donated gift certificates. Uh, we got some of the local businesses and I know they get inundated with requests for things, but they were very generous. And a lot of people like bought gift certificates to donate or made like themed baskets, um, pet baskets or movie night baskets. Um, even like antique furniture that they didn't want anymore was mm -hmm. in the auction. Antique, wow. Yeah, we had some really nice things and uh, we did really well. And it was all um, online set up on, a, on our website and you could go and you know enter you know your information and bid on it and then you would get an email if somebody had outbid you mm -hmm. so and it went on for a couple of weeks so you mm -hmm. could go see okay my outbid i really want that or you know now i'm going to hold there mm -hmm. so it was really successful um so we did that over the winter and i think i'm not sure i heard some talk like maybe they're going to have a pancake breakfast this year we didn't have it last year what time of the year do you usually have? That's that? usually like April, April, April or May. So mm -hmm. I just heard something about that the other day, and I'm usually not involved in it because it's on a Saturday morning, and I'm always working at the shelter mm -hmm. on Saturday morning, so mm -hmm. it can't be two places at once. Right. Um, and uh, I'm not sure about. We've always had a golf tournament, but I'm not sure. I haven't heard about that yet. But mm -hmm. things are starting to get a little eased up. Mm -hmm. Almost all the volunteers now have had. Uh, have been vaccinated that I, you know, because a lot, most of us are senior citizens, so. We right, right. Well, both you and I are uh, uh, finished getting vaccinated yeah. no. now, you and I yeah. both, so um, that's something that Patty and I have in common. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, we also, we always take, uh, we're always, if people want to donate or we're still doing that, it's ongoing, the brick, you can buy a brick, a memorial brick, or um, I mean, I have a brick for every dog I've ever had, including the ones I currently have. So, he just moved the cups, her cup over. Move her cup yeah. over? In the battle line. Oh, okay. It's right in the way of it. Yeah, okay. Is that okay? So that it kind of, so that the Access oh. Chautauqua shows up. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, and the dog to show up. 
Yeah, because yeah, she's fighting okay. them. Oh, look but, at how cute she is. Yeah, a minute ago <laughs> she looked like a moment, minute ago she looked like she was sleeping, Let's and get then it back here, and then and then when we had to wait, start moving around. The, now it's not. In the, now it's not in the camera. Uh, wait, I got to go this way. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay, so anyway, she looked like she'd fallen asleep, but yeah. then when we had to start moving around, oh, no. she, <laughs> her eyes popped back open again. Well, she can have a nap. This is usually their nap time anyway. In the, uh, we're, I'm there early in the morning, and they all go outside, and then they come in and have breakfast, and then they all go for a walk. I think she had two walks already today. Her eyes so, are getting yeah. droopy again. Yeah, and she's, <laughs> her legs are just kind of hanging here. She's, yeah. she's pretty relaxed. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so people cannot uh, donate for the yard sale until July, is that right, correct? Right, right. We just don't have the storage space. Mm -hmm. We have that one big building, so, and we use that a lot to, you know, like, for example, yesterday, the wind and the rain and, you know, we don't walk dogs. It's too dangerous, so mm -hmm. we have that room and we can go over there and play fetch and, mm -hmm. you know, give them some one-on-one -on -one attention. So oh, yeah. we use that a lot in bad weather. Okay. So... We don't, you know, if we started collecting now, I'm sure we could fill that room. <laughs> People are always wanting to get rid of stuff, so. But yeah, so yeah. July, I, usually July 1st is when we start accepting donations for the yard sale. So She looks you, like such a little angel falling asleep she, there. She is a little angel. She is the nicest little thing. Uh-huh. Yep. yep, and she's uh, spayed and has all yeah. of her Whenever, up to date on her vaccinations. Yep. No, we don't. The only ones that leave the shelter not spayed or neutered are, are puppies. puppies when they're and, not old enough. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. The, and it, when you adopt a puppy, um, it's two hundred and fifty dollars, but then uh, and you have to get it spayed or neutered before it's six months old, and then when you show us proof of that, you get a hundred dollars of your money back. Oh, okay. But I guess we follow up on that too to make sure you're doing it. But I mean, we do a pretty good job of um, screening our applicants and making sure the dogs are all going to good homes. And so I don't think we've ever had a problem where... Yeah, there's kind of a background check that you yeah. do on people. Like they have to uh, mention one or two veterinarians that they've been to. Yeah. and one or two other people. Yeah, references, uh, yeah. Like for me, when I want to adopt a pet, um, I use the people that I pet sit for for uh -huh. <laughs> references because I do that once in a while yeah. for people that I know. Uh -huh. So uh, they make good references if, uh -huh. if you take care of their animals. Yeah. They're good references. So... Um, yeah, she's making it super easy on me if she's just going to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. She's sleepy. Well, anyway, so we were talking about uh, fundraising, but right. we always are. Um, oh, I had a list in here, but. Um, whoops, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you up. Honey. Every time you move, she wakes up. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Uh, the things that we always need that people can donate, you know, whenever is, uh, you know, canned food, bleach, um, the bleach spray, paper towels. Uh, wipes and hand soap, uh, tennis balls, Kong toys, um, just no rawhide toys. We don't like those. Postage stamps, hot dogs, dryer sheets, <laughs> copy paper. Did you say paper, postage stamps? Postage stamps, yeah, because okay. we do a lot of mailing, uh, thank you notes. Oh, and, okay. And, you know, we just, we do a lot of, because people donate, and then we will send them a thank you note if they give us the name and address and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So we do a lot of mailing. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, copy paper and of course oh and the other thing we do is we collect um, if you don't want to take your bottles and cans back to the store you can bring them to the shelter during the day and just open the front door and there's a little place right on the left hand side where you'll see bags piled up of cans and bottles so we have one volunteer okay. that takes so, them to like one of those can king places or something. Oh, okay, and and uh, winds up uh, getting yeah. the money so for we get returning the, money. the bottles right. and cans. So we get okay. the money for that. So, okay, she, she really uh -huh. wants to sleep in a. I need a bigger lap. Come here, <laughs> come here. There we go. Oh, she's gonna hang off. Okay, here. I'll put my Sometimes they fall asleep laying on the floor when they're here. Oh. Okay, sorry, honey. There. Okay, she. Got I think better. she's maybe the smallest one that's ever. Yeah. Come on, uh, fresh <laughs> perspectives. Um, 
uh, well, the rest of them that were there today were, I mean, we had one that's like, uh, he might have some Great Dane and some Lab. I mean, just a big giant. And he's still, he's less than a year old, I think, or maybe a year old, so he's got a lot of puppy energy. Do you still have that one that's a mastiff? The last I knew you had a mastiff over mm, there, wasn't it? No, I, that one did get adopted. Oh, did it? I think oh, so. Oh, oh, that's good. Mastiff. Yeah, we've had a few mastiffs come through, and, you know, I mean, some of them are, are really, I mean, they're usually pretty, pretty big, strong dogs. Oh, right. But right. a lot of them are big babies, too, so. Oh, they, oh, you yeah. Know, which is well, good. Well, you know, <laughs> the mastiffs, I, I've got to tell those of you in the viewing audience, those mastiffs are so big. <laughs> probably if you adopted one, nobody would ever try to break into no, your house. No, probably not. They're pretty intimidating yeah, looking, you right, know. Right. Um, I used to kind of um, be afraid of that variety of dog, um, but I, I've kind of gotten over it because uh, I met some that were nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, gentle mastiffs. Well, that's so. just, you know, that's basically how it is. I mean, if you have them when they're little and you treat them right, then mm -hmm. they'll be a nice dog when mm -hmm. they grow up. Mm -hmm. But you don't want them to be nice if somebody tries to well, break into your house. Well, yeah, but <laughs> I don't know. She's so, just, uh, uh, I think she's just sound asleep. Yeah, yeah, she sure is. Should we move along now to uh, the pictures? Well, sure. If you of, want to do that, I dogs, mean, no, we Chris. don't have a lot. I can talk about what's not on the website that's coming in. Oh, if you yeah, want to know. yeah. Well, well, let's go over the ones that you have there first. Okay. And, and then uh, after that, you can talk about the ones that are going to be coming okay. in. Okay. Well, now well, there's one named Abby there. Yeah, I got to grab my notes then. Um, sorry, little dog. I'm going to wake you up again. <laughs> Abby, 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 uh, now I looked at the website this morning because I like to know what I'm talking about if I don't know them personally. And I She's new, apparently. don't know Abby. So she, it says on the website, she's 25 pounds. Um, she's working on crate training and house training. And so I'm assuming that she's in foster care. We have mm -hmm. a few people that will foster care for us. And uh, it's usually like little dogs that are, you know, because the shelter's loud and um, mm -hmm. big rambunctious dogs. And so if we get little tiny skittish dogs, um, a lot of times they'll, they'll do just better in a foster home. And the people that do that usually have, they'll have other dogs of their own that are very dog friendly and, you know, calming for these kinds of dogs. Oh, yeah. So I'm not sure who's fostering her, but, you know, I know she's not at the shelter, so she must be in foster mm -hmm. care. That one, Abby, looks like one that uh, my parents had at one point yeah. in time uh, that was named Beans. Mm -hmm. You can see why you, they might name a dog that looks like that, Beans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Biscuit. She is Biscuit. A beautiful, great P White Pyrenees. Uh, she could be mixed, but she, maybe she's, you know, I'm not sure if she's a purebred. She's one to two years old. Um, she had puppies when she, when, when we got her, she had the puppies already. So we got her with the puppies. She had six beautiful, beautiful puppies. Um, I, she's beautiful. She is beautiful, and she's a very good mom. Like, she's still, the puppies are eight weeks old now. Uh -huh. I think today is their second month birthday. So they're going to be old enough to be adopted. Yeah, so. one already left yesterday for its new home. Um, and I think, I think we have, you know, they're not on the website, so we probably already have all the applications. Um, oh, you think probably they've already all been claimed. Yeah, they're already yeah. spoken for and maybe not picked out. I know I was there last night and a, a family came in and picked one and mm -hmm. uh, we'll pick it up, you know, in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you like really large dogs, yeah, a Great the, Pyrenees is a good one. And the puppies are you. Great Pyrenees and supposedly Caucasian Shepherd, which is another giant white fluffy dog. Oh, is it really? With a little tan. So the puppies have like, some of their faces have like um, darker, like uh, some tan fur, a little black around their noses. But they are just like huge, I think they're like 12, 
pounds already. Mm -hmm. I, they're just giant balls of fluff, and they are the have the nicest temperaments. And oh, the mom really? has a, a really nice temperament. Does She's she? a very sweet dog. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, and then one actually one of the people that came to look at them yesterday thought, huh, maybe I'll take the mom instead. You know, <laughs> skip all that chewing and crate oh, training. Oh, I know. Because she's she is pretty much uh, house trained. I mean, when she can go out, she will go out and do her business. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, it it uh, puppies can be difficult to have around because they chew up all of your belongings. First, you gotta house train them, and that's a lot. You know, you gotta yeah. take. It's like having a baby, except they grow up a lot faster than a baby. So, yeah. You yeah. know, but you might have a few sleepless nights where they're, you know, if you're trying to crate train them and they're whining <laughs> in their crate, or you gotta get up every couple hours and let them out to go potty. And, uh huh. And uh, but you know, then it's your little baby from the time it's a little baby so there's mm -hmm. a lot to be said for that mm -hmm. I mean I've mm -hmm. had I've had experience with both older dogs that I've adopted and and, and I've had a few puppies so mm -hmm. but anyway so Biscuit had has beautiful puppies uh-huh and she's beautiful herself and she is <laughs> and this is Buddy Buddy is about six years old he's got very soft fur he's like some a mix of something maybe I think they list him as hound mix, but mm -hmm. the way his hair is so soft, I think he might have a little spaniel in him. Oh, oh. And, uh, yeah, um, he's he doing, has a, a young looking face. For, he's about six and he's really super friendly with other dogs and not reactive to other dogs. Mm -hmm. um, he's just a really nice guy. His thing is he can climb over a fence. Uh oh. So yeah, so you either <laughs> have to, you know, just, but he, he <clears throat> likes to be with people. Like mm -hmm. I'll let, and this morning uh, we're cleaning the shelter. I let him out to do his business in a covered pen so he can't jump out. Mm -hmm. And then I just let him come back in and he just hangs out with us while we're cleaning. Oh. And he just walks around and, you know, he's a very, very nice dog. So in other words, he helps with the clean. Yeah, he helps, yeah. So <laughs> if but, you can <laughs> call what dogs do help. Right, then. right. Yeah, he's helpful. <laughs> And, uh, but he would need to be, you'd either have to, you know, maybe one of those electronic, the underground thing. I've never, I have no experience with that. I don't either. So I don't really know how that works, if it works. You know, does he try to jump high enough to get away from the signal or I, I don't know how they work, but um, he would need to be on a leash or I will take him out into one of the fenced yards and when I'm like cleaning up the poop out there and he'll stay right around with me. Mm -hmm. But I did see him the other day, he's kind of looking up at the corner of the fence, probably thinking like, hmm, could I climb right there, you know? So you wouldn't be able to just put him out in the backyard by himself and, and expect, him, expect to him to stay there. Stay <laughs> around. But he really is people friendly, dog friendly. He's a really all around nice guy. He's, and he's snoring. <laughs> Okay, that's Belle. Belle. Belle's a husky mix, they think, uh, about two years well, old. She, it looks like she's got blue eyes. She's so got she one could... blue eye and one brown eye. Oh, one blue and yeah, one brown eye. Yeah, see there you can oh see the gosh. brown eye. She's cute. She's super cute, very friendly, a little skittish. You know, she can be. I don't know whether she was mistreated at some point. How you old know? did you say you thought um, she was? One to two years old. One to two. Oh, two years old, I think <coughs> I have in my notes. Uh, mm -hmm. When we got her, she was heartworm positive Ooh. and has been treated for heartworm though. So she has to take it easy. I, after they're treated, they have to like not have a lot of aerobic exercise. So we don't let her just run crazy out in the backyard. Um, we put her in for oh, a couple more weeks and then oh, she'll be off. Oh, a couple of weeks. Yeah, and then not she's, forever. Yeah. Okay, that's what I was just gonna yeah. ask, yeah. Yeah, just while the treatment is, you know, well, she's getting over the treatment, then uh, after that she'll be off, you know, mm -hmm. restrictions and can do mm -hmm. whatever she wants. But, mm -hmm. yeah, she's real nice. And she's little, so. Isn't there something you're supposed to be able to do to prevent animals from getting heartworm? Yeah, I think you give them medicine. You give them like a preventative a medicine. A preventative medicine. Or I, I'm, <coughs> I'm, is it mosquitoes that carry the heartworm? So I if don't you know. put. If you put like a you know a topical thing or you know you, I mean you sh you usually do I mean you should use like a flea I use a, for my dogs uh, it's flea 
uh, tick and mosquito repellent. Oh, just oh, a, oh, you a topical. get one that includes yeah. flea tick and mosquito. mosquito. Oh. And, uh, yeah, I didn't know where they got the heartworms. I think it's I never mosquitoes. Really no, mosquitoes. I think so. So mm. that's uh, and they grow to be really super long things. Yeah, and they're inside their heart and yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but she'll be okay. I mean, it's treatable as long as it's caught you know, early. Mm -hmm. um, Before it does a lot of damage. Right, or, right, right. Yeah. So she'll be fine. And she is pretty peppy. This guy, King. Looks like a lab. He's a beautiful, giant, yellow lab. A very nice dog. But he really needs, like, somebody who's going to be firm and, and willing to work with a trainer, possibly, if they aren't good at training themselves. He's a young dog? Yeah, he's he? a young dog. Um, he was an owner turnover. Supposedly, they said they didn't have time for him, but you know maybe it was because he was so rambunctious. Because uh -huh. he, he, you know, a lot of dogs when they want to play, they'll, you know, like bite you, mouth you, and oh, yeah. he does that. But you know, he's a big dog, and uh -huh. so uh -huh. when he's doing it, even though it's playful, it can be painful to <laughs> us. <laughs> so yeah, we, really, <laughs> we try to get him. The, you know, we're working on him. He's gotten a lot better with his manners, um, mm -hmm. but he would still need some training. But he's a beautiful dog and a, and a nice dog. He's, he's not like, he, he doesn't ever try to be, he's not vicious in any way. It's just, he's just big, rambunctious, and he's got that, he, he'll he grab your sleeves and, you know, or like oh, that. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. you know, he'd be way too much for kids or, oh, yeah. or me. I don't walk him. <laughs> uh, did it say else. something about no cats also with him? On, yeah, on, I think it did there. say no cats. I think he, he could probably do a cat in pretty quick. Mm -hmm. This is Reggie. Reggie. Reggie is another big, big, strong, uh, probably a lab, maybe some... Uh, Maybe some Great Dane. Yeah, it he's looks still like, growing. It he's, looks like he's a mixture of stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's real friendly, real nice dog. He's just oh, he's really, not full grown then. No, yeah. he's not full grown yet, and uh, he's very playful. But he's he's not bitey, you know, like mm -hmm. ripping your sleeve up or anything mm -hmm. like that. He's a he's just a nice guy, and he'll work for food. I walked him this morning and. Uh, I told him at one point during the walk, I said, oh, you're a good dog. And he turned around and sat down like, OK, where's the treat? <laughs> so I did have some in my pocket, so I gave him a treat. But yeah. yeah so um, when Patty first got here with Annie uh, this morning, um, she was trying to give Annie a, a treat. And apparently uh, none of them, none of neither of the two treats she tried to give her was satisfactory because she she threw them on the floor yeah. after Patty put them in her mouth. She is selective <laughs> in her treats. I'd never seen a, any of the dogs that got brought in here do that before. Well, they usually gobble right, up the treats. Right, right. Well, I guess uh, she doesn't well, care. Well, at least she's a calm dog yeah, anyways. Uh, yeah, that's why she's here. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to ring Reggie or King. Yeah, really. <laughs> And this one? Oh, that's Salvatore. Salvatore? Sal. Sal. He was a stray, uh, found run around down in Silver Creek near the reservation. And when, it's a good thing we got him because he had parvo. Parvo? What yeah, is that? Parvo. It's a parvo virus. It's a very uh, serious, can kill a dog, can kill a puppy in a day. Oh, really? It's very serious. And it's. You know, it's it, it gets in their their whole uh, intestinal system. Um, it's it, and he was very very sick. I mean, we, you know, he had vet care. He had to have fluids. Um, you know, and you they just you just hope they can fight it off. Now, usually, you get your puppy vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's one parvo. of the things that people the right. dogs get vaccinated. So obviously again. he was running loose stray. No one had ever vaccinated him, and you know he was probably close to a year old. So he got like really really sick, super super skinny, and you know you're just hoping he can you know you get enough. I mean we had to like just liquefy food and. Put a put it in a syringe and squirt it down his throat oh. and water and we did nurse him back to health and now he's mm -hmm. he's he's a really nice dog he's a happy you know he walks pretty good on a leash um, very playful 
He's, he's a, a mixture, is yeah, he? Yeah, he's probably a pit bull mixture. Uh -huh. But he's really pretty, really nice yeah. dog. I like him. Everybody yeah. likes him. He's a nice guy. So okay. we're hoping he gets a, you know, he'll get a good home. So. And this one is very handsome. And that's Soshi. She came in with, uh, she had a dog friend, Nova, and we tried to get them adopted together. Oh, uh -huh. Their person lived down in, I'm thinking down south somewhere, Georgia or mm -hmm. somewhere, and uh, she joined the, some branch of the service and was oh. gonna be gone for four years. Oh, I so see. So she found out about our rescue where, you know, we work really hard to find homes, find homes and hopefully find homes for them together. Uh-huh. But as it turned out, Nova turned out to have like lupus. <laughs> so, what, the other dog? Yeah. Oh. And so he was going to need, you know, some special care. Um, we found a family that was willing to give him that special care. It's it's not a big deal, like, but you just have to keep him out of the sun. Uh, maybe put sunscreen on his nose. Um, he's going to need medication. And re actually, the two of them together. Um, so she was the boss. Oh, is that and right? And she was bigger than him. So she kind of bossed him around. So after seeing how the two of them acted together, we kind of decided that, you know, they really would be okay if they weren't together. Right. And yeah. so Nova's doing very well in his new home. And actually, so she didn't seem to mind that he wasn't there. She's, oh, okay. Per, you know, okay. like sometimes they would be they'd stop eating or and she hasn't shown any any signs of like any kind of separation anxiety from she's very beautiful yeah, she's really pretty she's how a, old is she oh uh, i think she's six oh and six she's kind of big but she walks along nice on a leash uh -huh. um okay so the she was with her person for a really long time yeah she was with the person and then you know so she's looking for a home, but she's a nice dog. She's got blue eyes, real pretty She's blue very eyes. beautiful, yeah. yeah. I Was that the end of our I list? I think that that might have been all of the pictures that we had. Okay, so uh, well, so, so coming soon um, today, the, the woman who uh, has basically a puppy nursery in her home, mm -hmm. she's on her way to Indiana to one of these places to get a mom dog with her seven puppies, mm -hmm. and then there's two other litters, and I guess those puppies, the the mom and the puppies, those puppies are very small and mm -hmm. young. Mm -hmm. And then we're also getting uh, two more litters, a litter of four and a litter of five, mm -hmm. and they're like adoption age. Oh, so, okay. But I don't have any idea like what kind, what of kind they are. But we will be having so you know there uh, will be puppies coming up on the be, website <laughs> in the not will be too puppies. in right. the not too distant right. future. Right. Okay. So we so we've got so you'll have plenty to choose from yeah. pretty soon. And yeah. we also have coming from a different um, um, transport tonight. We're getting two more dogs in. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, older not old old, but you know, mm -hmm. one to two year old dogs. Um, I can't remember. I mean, I saw their sheet this morning, but I don't remember what kind. And, you know, sometimes you just see this little picture and it's, you don't know how, you can't tell from that how big they're going to be. So, but they'll be on the website probably after tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure when the puppies will be, but um, so if you're interested in adopting, the, the best thing to do really, because if you're just, if you're just looking at the website and you go, wow, I really like that dog. I'd like to, but somebody else, and then you've got to fill out the application. And that application, then we're going to check references, we're going to check vet references. And, you know, it's pretty much all volunteer. So it might not get, you know, you, I know people get anxious. Like they fill out the application and they want to know in 30 minutes, am I approved? Do I get to come down and get a dog? Sometimes it might take a few days, even a week, for us to get your application processed. and and have you be approved and once you're approved you can then you're you know then you can look and say yeah I'd like to meet that dog and uh, and then once you're approved if you meet the dog and you want to take the dog you usually you can just take it right then mm -hmm. or make mm -hmm. the plan like in a day or two to come and pick up mm -hmm. the dog so I would say the best way to do it even if you're just thinking but you don't know what you want um, fill out the application have you know get an approval 
and then you can just watch the website and when the dog of your dreams comes along <laughs> <laughs> you'll probably be more likely to be first in line for it than <laughs> than not so right right and and there's always uh there's always um advertising in the newspapers you always have a dog a dog of a the, dog week. Of the yeah. week in yep. in the local newspaper. Yeah, I think so. It, I don't know if it was Sochi this week or Sal, but I I usually cut them out and stick them up on my kitchen cupboard. I got a bunch of them up there. So, um, yeah. And then a lot of times, by the time that picture's in there, they are adopted, or that really does help too mm -hmm. to uh, get their picture out there. I think they put it in the Observer and the Jamestown paper. So. I remember a year ago you brought Heaven to the television studio and she appeared on television, uh -huh. remember? Yep. And eventually somebody adopted. April 8th her. last year. April 8th got somebody adopted. got She is got living adopted. out on a farm. It's a beautiful place. The people do, uh, they have a horse rescue. Uh huh. And they have chickens and ducks and geese and it's way, way out in the country. It's dog paradise. Oh. They have cats, mm -hmm. they have, you know, and then they take care of all of these animals. I mean, they're wonderful people. And and, and then the uh, and the um, the dog gets along with all of the other animals. Yeah, that was the concern. Whether uh, and they renamed her Ivy. So her Ivy. name's Ivy, and she has a dog friend um, named Gotham. Gotham. And they're good pals, and uh, they do send me pictures. And the late most recent picture I got, she was laying on a bed with one of her stuffed toys that she likes. Oh. She was like holding it in her paws. Oh, how <laughs> And cute. sleeping, it was the cutest thing. Oh, how cute. And uh, but anyway, so I, you know, that was the thing. Would she hurt, you know, would she try to kill chickens and ducks and whatever? And she doesn't, she, they mm -hmm. said, you know, she'll run through the flock just to scatter them, but it's just play. Like mm -hmm. she never has gone after any of them. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. made friends with the cats. You know, she's good wow. friends with the other dogs. She, what, the day that I took her there, they had horses, and uh, you know, she probably never had seen a horse before. And she went over and was just, you know, didn't bark, didn't growl, didn't strain to get at them. She was just very curious, and she stood up, put her paws up on the fence, and her, she was nose to nose, and the horse was sniffing her, and she was sniffing the horse, and mm -hmm. and that was it. Like no reaction. So she found a, a really good place. she found the perfect she place found the, yeah, for she's her. in the honey pot now so yeah now about this horse rescue now is this um, a rescue where the horses come there to spend the rest of their lives I or do they think find mm, do they rehome them you know I think they do rehome them uh-huh so because if you were rescuing horses the you yeah know, you eventually you just have too many. Probably. Yeah, that's yes. what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think they probably do adopt them out, but you know, I I'm not that sure about how that works, and I can't even remember the name of it. So, oh, and that's not in Chautauqua County. No, it's in Cattaraugus County. Cattaraugus County. County. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't sound like anything I've ever heard of from around yeah. here. But so she, I think. It, I have been here since then, and I don't remember which dog I brought, but that one uh, got adopted. You know, we adopt see. over. I think it's, it's, and I don't know what it will be this year, um, but it's over 250 dogs a year that we find homes for. Wow! Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of dogs. Yeah, it's a lot of dogs. It? Yeah. And you know, before they go, they're all up to date on shots, spayed or neutered. Um, unless they're puppies. Unless they're puppies and they're microchipped. So, you know, if you adopt, and I guess the microchip goes, uh, it gets registered to the shelter. So if oh. the dog gets lost, then the chip will show and they'll call us mm -hmm. and then we will know who owns it and, mm -hmm. and you'll, get, you'll be contacted that way. Because, you know, occasionally a dog, if you adopt a dog from us, and you decide for some reason you don't want the dog anymore, you're supposed to bring the dog back to us. You're not supposed oh, to. Oh, right. You're not supposed to dump it off somewhere or give yeah, it to your friend uh, or. Yeah, it's, it's like that at the uh, Thrifty Kitty, too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I remember uh, when uh, we adopted the two cats that live with us now, uh, they said that uh, 
the cats have to come back there if uh, we reach a point where we can't keep them yeah. anymore, but I don't see that happening. Right. Anyways, you know, um, if I thought there was a chance of that, I wouldn't mm -hmm. adopt them in the first place. Yeah. But yeah, they, they say you can't give it to a relative yeah. or the animal to a relative or anything. It has to come back there. Well, that, that did happen like uh, maybe a year or so ago. There was a, a dog was found out of state. I'm not sure, I can't remember if it was Ohio or Pennsylvania. Um, the, it was, you know, of course, microchipped because it came from our shelter. Mm -hmm. And so it was traced back to our shelter. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that it was somebody local that had just, I don't want the dog anymore. And they gave it to somebody else. And oh, really? The, somebody, was, you yeah. mean it was somebody who'd adopted the dog from your shelter? Right, from our shelter. Didn't, didn't want it and gave, gave, it, it, away gave it away instead of bringing it back right, to the to somebody shelter. out of state. And then the dog got loose, got picked up as a stray and then got brought back, so then it got brought back to us, mm -hmm. and uh, then it got adopted by somebody else local. <laughs> oh, no. So it, it's got a good home now. Oh, good, where, good. Yeah, where yeah. that probably is not gonna happen again, but oh, yeah. Oh, good, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, I mean, we really do try to make sure that, and you, you can never be 100% sure, mm -hmm. you know, you try to find the best home, mm -hmm. but you know, there's no accounting for what people are capable I, of <laughs> I know that you don't know I about know. well you know uh, when we had I remember at the time that um, we adopted the, the two cats that we had we were told that one of the ones that we picked out uh, to take home with us uh, was one that they had already adopted out ah. and he and another cat had been adopted by a certain family and wound up bringing the two cats back the huh. next day. Wow. Um, not because of anything the cats did, but the people had dogs that had oh. been killing feral cats. Oh my God. On their property. Yeah. And the dogs went wild when they wow. uh, brought the, the cats home. And uh, it, it seems strange that people would think that that would work to adopt yeah. two cats and bring them home to live with dogs that had been right. killing cats right, and right. Uh, expect it to work out, yeah, that's you know, so, um, so that was kind of a strange, mm -hmm. strange situation. So, um, well, they warned us about that uh, because of the fact that I had picked one of those two cats, you know, and they didn't know mm -hmm. how that mm -hmm. was going to work out. but. When we, uh, when we took him home, uh, he'd become friends with our dog within a week. Yeah. So, you know, it worked out okay. Yeah, I have, uh, the th I have three dogs, three cats, and everybody gets along. Mm -hmm. I mean, the cats mm -hmm. have a space, and it's got a gate. They have their own room, and it's got a gate with, uh, one of them just jumps over the gate, the cats. The dogs don't. And mm -hmm. it's funny because it's, it's just, you know, a baby gate. If the dogs really wanted to, they could probably just tear the gate down, but mm -hmm. they don't, you know, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. respect the, apparently the, the cats have their own space. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the cats stay in there at night, they, at night they kind of sneak around the house, you know, when the dogs are, well, they're, they sleep in crates at night, so mm -hmm. then the cats can do whatever they want without You, you know, it, it's funny how animals learn things. Um, I, I know that um, they get the, like, uh, if I'm going to do yoga exercises in the room that I exercise in, for example, you know, I might first, when a dog is young, uh, barricade the room, either close the door or set a chair in front of it mm -hmm. or something to prevent the dog from coming in. Yeah. But then after a while, they know, they get the idea that while mommy's doing these exercises, you don't go in that room. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's kind of interesting the way they figure that out. And uh, another thing that I've noticed with dogs is that we've had is um, when I climb into bed at night and cover up with the blankets, 
they know that they have to, they get the picture after a while that they're not supposed to bother me when uh -huh. I do that because they know I'm going to sleep for the yeah. night. So it's, it's really kind of interesting how they figure these things out, you know, after a little while. All we have to do is, I say, because I give them two little treats when they go to bed in their mm -hmm. crate. I say, time for bed. They just run to the crates, <laughs> get in the crates, and I walk in, put the treats in there and shut the door, and we're good till morning, so. Well, you know, one time uh, when I was pet sitting for some friends, um, well, you know, usually people will have me stay overnight in their house with the animals um, when I pet sit for some people. And um, I remember this one time I was pet sitting uh, for somebody who had three dogs. And, you know, I was supposed to have them in, each in their own place for the night. And uh, I was supposed to put uh, this little dachshund uh, in, in his uh, crate for the night. And that little stinker uh, was such a con artist. There's something about if they roll over onto their backs, you can't pick them up or oh. uh, something. You know, it was something about, um, you, know, uh, you know, it's, it's just uh, he knew that. Yeah. So he'd, he'd roll over onto his back because he knew it would be difficult for me to uh -huh. get get him to the crate. Yeah, slide you know. him in. It was something he'd already uh -huh. figured out right, somewhere right. along the line. So, so the, where did he sleep then? <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember the last night I was there, they were only gone for, uh, I think it was two or three nights. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I just kind of wound up not actually succeeding at getting him into oh. the crate. <laughs> Talk about naughty, you know, they yeah. figure out these I, you, animals, you know, as cute as they are, they can also uh, be con artists uh -huh. and pull the wool over your eyes every chance. Uh, well, I watched, every chance I watched my sister's dogs uh, a couple of times, and she had a couple. She has a couple of little shelties, mm -hmm. and we let our dogs on the furniture. But, uh -huh. You know, it's. I mean, we but, can wipe off the furniture, but but she she doesn't want her dogs yeah, to get on her, her furniture. On the furniture. So I think they were at our house for two minutes and, you know, so they were on the furniture. So <laughs> when she came back, they went to Europe or something. After a couple of weeks, they came back to get their dogs. And I said, well, you know, you're just going to have to retrain them when you get home because, I mean, this is at night. I'm sitting around reading a book or watching something on TV and it's, you know, I'll have like three dogs in my lap. So mm -hmm. then her dogs just joined the Join the pile. So, where's the pile of puppies? <laughs> well, you watching know, if TV? they see the other dogs yeah. doing it, you know, they're going to rebel against yeah. obeying the rules right, that right. they're that they're used to because, yeah. uh, oh, just because. Um, well, yeah. Other than you, that, you though, know. my sister knew they were well taken care of, so I guess you know. Her dogs are probably now not on the furniture anymore. But, oh, oh you know. yeah. It was only <laughs> one time she had you do no, I did it a couple of times, and, you know, I spoiled them a couple of times. But um, well, she moved actually too far away now for me to pet sit. So. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, it, it's kind of fun to pet sit for uh -huh. other people. It's kind of like uh, getting to have more pets than the ones you can actually afford to have. Well, that's you know? that's kind of how I feel like volunteering at the, the shelter. Shelters. It's just like, you know, they're just like my dogs while they're there. And, yeah. uh, you know, but I'm happy to see them go to good homes because, right, right. you know, people will say, oh, I could never volunteer. I'd want to take them all home. And Well, I wouldn't want to take all of them home. Yeah, you know, right, I'm, right. I'm sure that I would be more... Uh, I would find some more appealing than others. You well, know, yeah, yeah, you know, but uh, we do get our favorites, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, but even even so, um, even my favorite ones, um, I don't want to bring them home because they'd be dog number four, and how much attention are they going to get? Right. And, you know, right. pretty soon, where do you draw the line? And then, right, then right. you're a hoarder, and right, and, uh, uh, right. You know, um, 
I, I know what you mean. I've seen some episodes on television of um, a program called Hoarding Buried Alive. Oh, yeah, and like yeah. That. And every once in a while they would have a hoarding issue where the thing, where what the people were hoarding would be animals. Yeah. And uh, some, f I saw some really hideous situations on, on that program. Mm -hmm. uh, one time there was this woman who hoarded, well, she thought she was helping them by taking in stray cats, yeah. but she couldn't afford to, yeah, uh, she couldn't afford to get them all neutered and right. get veterinary care right. for them, and they'd be reproducing, yeah. and they'd be getting sick and dying. Yeah. and. Yeah. I remember they had to have like a psychologist, a psychiatrist, and a team, mm -hmm. and everything come in to clean up, every, yeah, clean everything right. up, and they had to take most of the cats away from her, and some mm -hmm. of them had to be euthanized. And I remember this lady psychiatrist had come into her house to look over the situation, and um, I remember her opening the refrigerator door. And there was no food in the refrigerator. It was dead, rotting cats. Oh she thought God. that burial wasn't good enough for wow. them, and she wanted them cremated. And she was wow. trying to save up the money to have them cremated. Yeah, and, that's oh gosh, a so, mental issue. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Jeez. it's kind of an obsessive compulsive disorder mm -hmm. that people that do that yeah. have. But you can only. You can really only mm -hmm. get away with adopting a few animals. Yeah, right, yeah, right. In, of, for, you of gotta your own, realize you know. your limitations. And so then, you know, I realize that, okay, so I really like this one, but it's going to get a good home mm -hmm. where maybe there's only one other dog mm -hmm. or no other dogs, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's going to have a great life. So, mm -hmm. right. you know, that's way better than, you know, crowding them in. And the other thing about uh, volunteering is, like if you just can't, you know, you don't, maybe you're not physically able to have a dog yourself because maybe you can't go out and walk them or, or you're, you know, if you're renting and you don't have a yard space right. or, right. or, you know, you're just, maybe you want to travel and you don't want to be tied down. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're a volunteer, then you can come and go, you know, you come for a couple hours a week, play with the dogs, walk dogs, feed them, whatever. Um, so, you know, you get to have that experience with dogs without actually having the expense and the responsibility of having one at your house. So I would mm -hmm. recommend anybody that wants mm -hmm. to volunteer. Well, how can people go about um, getting signed up to volunteer okay, at the there's shelter? A, on the website, or you can stop by the shelter, but on the website there's a, if you look under volunteer, There'll be um, an application on there that you can print out, and, and or maybe you can do it online. I'm not sure, because um, I've been doing it for so long, and when I did it, it was still a paper application. So. Oh, okay. But there still is a paper application, so you can fill that out, drop it off, and then the, when they get a few, you know, a few people interested, like a couple of people interested, they'll do a volunteer training. And oh, it's usually, well, that's a good idea, because... Yeah. Uh, uh, you don't want people coming in there and not yeah. knowing how to handle certain right, situations. Right, right. And so we, you know, want about maybe, you know, on a Saturday morning, once every other cup, every other month or so, they'll have a training program, and you come in, and they, uh, one person there, shows you the whole the whole shelter, each room and the yards and, um, you know, how we take care of the dogs, how we walk the dogs, you know, how to know where things are or what to do, or if you don't, you know, ask somebody, don't just do things. And, uh, and really there's a job for anybody. I mean, we have laundry that needs to be folded and, and uh, we have, um, you know, there's always like office stuff that can be done or uh, fundraising things that can be done or you know or just come and walk dogs and even if you're not physically able to walk like there's like that one guy King I don't walk him because he's just too big and strong for me mm -hmm. but so you know but there's little there's little girls like this that oh, yeah. anybody could walk this oh, you know yeah. so yeah or, or even uh, we have this one volunteer she'll come in and feed dogs and she's not physically able to walk them you mm -hmm. know but she'll just sit in their kennel 
and talk to them and pet them and, you know, calm them down, you know, make them feel good. And, uh, you know, they like that one-on-one -on -one time. Or we have the big room where you can take them and play fetch with them. And if it's bad weather or just they need some, you know, sometimes it's nice to get them away because their, you know, kennels are right next door to each other, mm -hmm. and they, they, you know, that one starts barking, they all start barking, yeah, they all get excited. It gets pretty noisy. It gets here. pretty noisy. So if you can take the one out for a walk or over to the room and just spend some time with them, um, they really enjoy that. So that's there's something for everyone to do, really. Yeah. Um, now one thing. Um, I know uh, certain smaller dogs, varieties of dogs, uh, have to be, um, you have to use a harness instead of a collar with a leash. Yeah. Because it, you hear about them uh, getting collapsed tracheas. Yeah, I, I put one on her today just because I had this one at home that doesn't fit my dogs anymore. And I thought, yeah, oh, I'm going to bring that harness and put it on her for today to see. Yeah, because a lot of them, they will pull on the leash and, mm -hmm. you know, it's pulling on their necks and, mm -hmm. you know, we have some where he'll be walking them and then they stop and they're like, ah, and they're, you know, choking, coughing, whatever. Right, You know, right. if they would just stop pulling, that wouldn't happen. But right, for some but of those, you know, we have different harnesses that we use on them and uh, we have a whole bin full, all different sizes, all different kinds. There's the ones I, I, the, I have some that I use on my own dogs and uh, they go up under their arms. I can't show you because I can't move. I'll wake her up. But <laughs> <laughs> when the dog pulls, it just pulls up under their arms a little bit. Uh -huh. And it's just enough to make them stop pulling so much. You know, it doesn't hurt yeah. them in any way. Yeah. It doesn't choke them in any way. Right, but it's right. just like, uh, what's that under my arm? And, then, like and then some uh, dogs too, I mean big dogs too, uh, here's another problem. Some of them figure out how they, that they can uh, pull themselves out of it and get loose too. Yeah, well we always, at the shelter, we always double leash the dogs uh -huh. when we walk them. So we have a slip lead that, like I have one on her now, mm -hmm. um, that'll tighten up mm -hmm. so that you can't back out of that. Oh, if you okay. have, And then there's the other one that we attach to the collar. Mm -hmm. So the slip lead, if used properly, it's not gonna choke them unless they're trying to, you know, back out of the collar, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing when you're walking the dog, you just, you know, you. Don't be on your phone. Pay attention to what you're doing. Watch Fo what the be focused. Yeah. On focus the on the dog. What's the, the dog animal, doing? And right. And yeah, um, it's amazing how um, some people, you know, with their smartphones, they walk around with them in their hand right. all the time. Right. You know, they're right. they're always uh, they're always yeah. waiting for a text or something. Well, we, we had that uh, we had that one dog, Sammy. She did get adopted finally. She'd been there a couple of years. Oh, I remember her. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember her. So she got adopted, but uh, she was one that used to, she was very clever. And she knew if you weren't paying attention and she didn't want to go back into the shelter, she backed out of her collars for I don't know how many different people she got away, you know. And then she would just stay out in the woods running around near the shelter. Mm -hmm. She'd come in when she felt like it. Mm -hmm. She would come back in. Mm -hmm. But sometimes Marsh is there till two in the morning in the middle of the winter with the door waiting open, for waiting it. for Sammy to decide that she want, is going to come back into her <laughs> into her kennel now. And, oh, uh, gosh. But now she's got a great home and she's happy and she's doing great. But she was one of those, you know, you really had to pay attention because when you were bringing her back in, if she didn't want to go, she'd stop and back up. And, you know, if you didn't have it tight and you weren't paying attention, I mean, she mm -hmm. would slip out of the, she would back out of mm -hmm. her collar mm -hmm. and the slip lead. Um, I've seen some things that people have had a certain kind of uh, harness type of thing uh, wake where it was like around there. Yeah, um, I, I've seen that some people with. Uh, I've I, seen those too. I've never used one. You know, uh, they, right. they they claim that um, the head halter kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They claim that if you can get control of the dog's head or something like that, that they'll stop or, I, or whatever. I don't know. I I've seen people. I've never used one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like something that my dog would enjoy having on its face, you know? Mm -hmm. So I use the harnesses that pull up under their arms mm -hmm. and, you know, they still pull a little, but it's mm -hmm. not as, as, as bad, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought I just thought I'd bring that up because, yeah. like, if somebody's thinking about adopting, let's say, a Yorkshire Terrier, mm -hmm. 
if they're they're just walking them with a collar with a leash on it, they're predisposed to the this like um, uh, collapsed trachea. Yeah. I know that yeah. because I've known people who uh, had yeah. to have surgery on their dogs because of that. And this girl so, might be, she could be part Yorkie. If yeah, you look she, at her, she, she could kind be. kind of has a Yorkie looking face. Somewhat, yeah. Yeah. But uh, well, yeah, I think so most Yorkies are smaller than her. Yeah, she's a little bigger. Yeah. But her hair is, <laughs> her hair is like, it's so wiry, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's funny how uh, different uh, breed, uh, breeds of dogs have totally different looks. Like, all cats look like cats. <laughs> but you know, the different breeds of dogs look so extremely different from yeah. each other. Right, you know, right. it's, well, it's like uh, it's like they're not the same kind of animal. Or human something. human intervention. You know, <laughs> you're right. Exactly. I mean, that's what we've done to them. So. Yeah, I suppose. I saw a cartoon like that once. It was like a couple of wolves were talking and and they're looking at some dog wearing a, you know, some foo-foo little dog wearing an outfit. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like I, laughing I, about it, like saw, what happened? Yeah, I saw a cartoon about um, uh, a wolf noticing how pampered a certain dog was or something like that. and how it must be nice to not have to worry about oh. your ne where your next <laughs> meal come from because you right. had a family to feed you yeah. and uh, all of these things. But then the wolf started noticing all of these other things like all of these rules. Yeah, and, right. You know, so, uh, so the dog says, well, maybe I have, or I mean the wolf says, well, maybe I haven't got it uh, so bad after yeah. all being a wild animal. <laughs> So uh, I, I thought that was a pretty interesting, uh, a pretty interesting cartoon. Well, so if somebody wants a nice lap dog, this is <laughs> this is for you <laughs> if you want a lap dog. If you want oh one goodness. that's going to sit yeah, on she's your lap, just, uh, she's just happy. This yeah, she really is. She's she'll be sad to go back into that little kennel, won't you? Well, it's oh. not a little kennel. It's a big kennel, but she's got noisy neighbors. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. But, yeah, she'll, she's well, not on the website, though, so I'm thinking yeah, she must be, she must have something in the works as far as her yeah, adoption goes. Yeah, you won't be there very long, Annie. You'll, uh, you'll have a nice home. In fact, maybe today, because if it wasn't her, I was going to bring Buddy. But Buddy's not, he's the one that I said was probably a spaniel. Is that the a one that climbs makes, over fences? Yeah, the one that climbs over fences. Yeah. I, I thought about bringing him because he's pretty, he's pretty laid back and chill. Uh -huh. But um, he's not, mm, sometimes he will just poop on the floor. Oh. But that's at the shelter. Uh -huh. So, you know, uh -huh. I don't know how he'd be, you know, when I let him run around when we're cleaning, he doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. But in his little kennel, he will mm -hmm. overnight. But then again, at night, you know, they're, they're left... You know, there's no, I mean, they go, they get a potty break and it might be 10, 11 hours before, you know, the next shift comes oh, in in the morning. Oh, yeah. So it's a yeah. long night. And, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's all concrete and we have pressure washers and drains. And yeah, so you gets, have a way to clean it easily. Yeah, it gets right? hosed down every yeah. morning, so. Well, I hate to say it, but we've come to the end of another oh, okay. episode of Fresh Perspectives. All right, Annie, you made it. And thank you for coming on. Thank you also, Annie, for being so well behaved <laughs> while you were here. And I'll see those of you in the viewing audience on the next episode.